Recorded live from Space Coast Podcast Studios in Melbourne, Florida, this is The Cannabis Report with Michael Patterson. Brought to you by MGMC Pharma Group, where we make a difference. Check out the virtual tour of our cannabis cultivation facility on our website, mgmc-group.com. Now here's your host, Michael Patterson. Woohoo! How's everybody doing today? Really excited to be here. The guy to my left, that would be Mark Patterson, our producer. Hello, hello. That's right, I, uh, Mike. Great, fantastic. Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> Have you on the show, Can't Support with Michael Patterson. And you know, you may notice that there was a different intro uh, to the show. We did uh, the last one remote last week, and apparently there were some technical difficulties where we had to redo the intro, but apparently my mic wasn't working specifically for the introduction, so then you had to do it? Exactly. That's Basically, kind of I had happened. to do your job. Okay. okay. That's what it so is. I had to do your okay. job okay. because you weren't here to do it. Oh, right. I mean, we did the whole show <laughs> perfectly fine, but apparently the <laughs> intro... It just had to be done it in studio. Done. Okay. It had to be done. Well, and so that brings me to another thing that happened. Now, when we shot the previous episode, between that, we had a podcast that we did. We we're going to have a guy named Brenton from Halftime Orange on uh, a New Zealand podcast. And so we have him on in a future show as a guest. And he asked us to be on his podcast as a combo. So we get in and they introduce us and then Michael talks for 15 minutes, okay? Solid. And I'm sitting there, just sitting there, right? right for 15 minutes. Right. And then Brenton goes, so Mark, you know, what do you do? And, and then Mike, Mike interrupts him and he goes, oh, this is Mark. He just reads the news. <laughs> You literally said that. He just reads the news. Okay? So you're throwing shade and sipping on Haterade, so you need to pump the brakes. Okay? And I think we just need to have this conversation right now. Okay? Look, you are not going to be as cool as me. Okay? It's okay. Exactly. It's okay with the Haterade, you know, and the shade. Mm -hmm. Look, I just want you to know. You're as close as you possibly can be on this planet to be as cool as me, and, but you just ain't there. <laughs> you just ain't there, Mike. Okay. It's okay. Really? It's really? okay. You're a legend in your own mind. Look, I just read the you news around here, Mike, you're obviously, so go ahead. Obviously, you're not reading the news. All you're doing is yapping your gum. You're just talking and talking. Nobody cares. So, oh, I'm sorry. Let me, this is a casual of Michael Patterson. Let me right. take it back to you. Okay. So we're very excited to be here. Very special show. We are with Ryan and Jada McKeever with a new television show coming out called High Valley, Colorado. Definitely going to have them, uh, excited to have them here in the studio, talk all about their journey. Okay, Mike, you messed the whole thing up of the show. Okay. What are you talking about? Tell me what's it called. Hemp, Hemp Valley, Colorado. Hemp Valley, it's Colorado. Hemp Valley, Colorado. I said Hemp Valley, Colorado. You said High Valley, I Colorado. I did. I did oh, say my Valley. goodness. Look at that. For some reason, I had High Valley I know. on my See, mind. See, it's the coolest level. He's you know, like, oh, I almost had it. You know what? Ahead. I, Go I, ahead. I, I, I need, need to learn how to read the news. I need to learn how to read the news. You need to learn how to read something I need to learn how to do something. Okay. So we're definitely excited to have him here today. As you can tell, if you've never watched this show before, we actually talk about cannabis. We don't we just do. fight back and forth and, and uh, just you jaw on each other. We'll but, get to uh, that. But our goal here is to educate and have a little bit of fun talking about cannabis and seeing what's coming in this world um, in, in regards to cannabis and hemp. There's a lot of exciting things happening, and so this is the place where you come to find out about the news and then meet all the great people that are setting these things up around the world, which is exciting. So, Mark, now <laughs> let's do your job and let's actually read the news. How about that? It's time for Cannabis News. <laughs> cannabis News is brought to you by Integrated Compliance Solutions from Cannabis Banking Compliance Software Support to Merchant Processing Services for Cannabis, Hemp, and CBD Businesses. ICS is your seed to bank solution. For more information, please go to ICSLV.com. So the letter of the day, guys, is B for billions. If you have not heard the biggest cannabis deal ever in the world. Oh, and stop. So while we're doing that, you can play that. So Jesse, we need to have there's a solemn moment that we need to have about that special thing that we got for Mike. All right. I think we need to play it now if we can or pull it up later, Jesse. But we're going to play you a special something later, Mike, Ooh, that you'll really like. I get a surprise. Now, back to the news because that's all I do. 
Largest cannabis deal ever, Jazz Pharmaceuticals agrees to purchase GW Pharma for $7.2 billion. Right. The announcement was made on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Jazz Pharmaceuticals is based in Dublin and has a strong presence across Western Europe and North America. Its existing drug portfolio is currently targeted at sleep and oncology. GW is one of the world's leading medical cannabis companies with its homegrown cannabis going into its licensed drugs, Sativex. Is I pronouncing that right, Mike? Yeah. Sativex and epilepsy drug, Epidilex. Its first cultivation facility was built only over, excuse me, 20 years ago. So they've been in the game a long time. Stephen Murphy, co-founder of the leading global data canatech firm, Prohibition Partners said the deal highlighted the upward trajectory of cannabis and its growing acceptance across the pharmaceutical space. What you are seeing is the future further validation of cannabis-based medicine and the recognition of the impact by traditional pharma that cannabis will have on the healthcare over the next decade. The premium paid by Jazz acknowledges the growing change in regulations globally that is providing patients with better access to cannabis-related medicine. So, Mike... How big is this deal? This is this is huge. And so if, if you're watching in America or listening in America, it, this is the difference between recreational cannabis and medical cannabis on an international stage. Um, if you're unfamiliar, GW Pharmaceuticals, they actually have an FDA-approved drug that Mark was talking about. And so um, the challenge is, is, is the cost in the United States. Right now it's 32000 U.S. dollars per year. It's basically a CBD drug. Um, where you could go to a medical cannabis dispensary and buy it for, you know, for an entire year supply would probably be a couple thousand dollars max. So the interesting thing on the international markets is this is where big pharma is going to go. This has really put everybody on alert because uh, to give you an idea, canopy growth and Aurora, some of the largest companies in the world are not worth that because they don't have those approvals. And so um, because of the pharmaceutical side. From the pharmaceutical side. Right. And so, so and ironically, these guys are on the NASDAQ, but any company who's doing cannabis of THC and doing THC in America cannot be on the NASDAQ, ironically. Okay, say that again. So if you sell THC products, right. you cannot be on the NASDAQ because you're breaking federal law. However, if you can sell THC products outside of America and come in and be on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. So theoretically, if by if, if you could import THC right now, you could work outside of the United States, import your THC and still be on the NASDAQ or be on the Stock Exchange. Until they change the law. No, you cannot import anything into America. I understand, but I'm saying Obviously you do. don't. Okay. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> oh, wise one. So... No, what I'm saying is, is that it's it's very ironic because you have companies like TrueLeave and GTI, these these multi-state operators that are in the United States, but they're on the public public exchanges in Canada. Okay. So it's like, well, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So that's why we need some some federal law changes, and and we'll get into that later. But uh, something is going to change uh, from the federal side down the uh, very very soon. But the interesting, one of the most interesting things, this company Jazz in in Ireland. Ireland still does not have a THC license at all. Wow. You can't even bring cannabis in the state because we know the companies who are getting ready to get one, they yeah. haven't even released a THC license, and they just bought a company that their product is illegal oh in, in, in Ireland. So that's wow. it's just crazy to see how, the, the, and the fact that they paid that up, for, uh, uh, what I call the it. Premium. The premium. The premium was because it, I don't I wasn't involved in the deal, but I'm assuming that GW came, we already know where this is going to go, so you pay the upside, the premium now, and then that way they'll get a, be able to make it on the upside. So you're starting to see that to where people know they have the golden ticket, so to speak, right. but they want to have a little bit of that upside to get a deal, and then the companies realize that if we want to get this deal done, we're going to have to pay that upside. And so also, one of the things to look at as an investor, this is going to be the smallest deal that you're going to see moving forward. Every time one of these comes out, right. it's going to be like uh, the pro football, American football players. When one guy gets a deal, then the next guy that sets the standard. It sets the standard. Right. And so there's only so many of these out there. It's not like there's 900 companies that want to go public and have the ability to do these things. So you're going to start to see these specific companies starting to go public, and a lot of them are going to do it through a SPAC, which is called a special purpose acquisition. And so it's a little bit 
quicker to go. And so we're already starting to see this. But it's exciting because this is what we've known forever is cannabis is going to explode on the global well, scene. We've been talking about a green tsunami. Right. You know? And so this is this is a big part of that. And so as we get into the more stories, you're going to kind of kind of realize more about that. Another piece of the puzzle. This article out of Newsweek, Virginia. Commonwealth first southern state votes to legalize marijuana starting in 2024. Virginia state and House of Delegates approved marijuana legalization bills paving the way for recreational cannabis in Virginia. Introduced by Virginia Senator Adam Eben, the Senate bill would eliminate criminal criminal penalties for simple possession and automatically expunge certain marijuana related criminal charges for some individuals records. The bill passed the Senate with a vote of 23 to 15. Similar version was passed by the House of 55 to 42. Lawmakers are expected to iron out the differences between the two bills before sending it to the Governor Northam. And he said he will support the bill. Taxes on state-sanctioned marijuana sales could be a boon to Virginia's economy. The report said that within years after commercial sales, the state would see somewhere between 147 and 250 million dollars per year from the sale of marijuana at a tax rate of 20 percent. A legal marijuana industry in Virginia could also be instrumental in creating approximately 18,000 jobs uh, within a few years of beginning the industry in Virginia. Now, measures in both bills, Mike, call for the creation of the Virginia Cannabis Control Authority, which would establish regulations for the production and sale of marijuana on a wholesale and retail level. So Governor Northam is expected to sign the bill, potentially allowing marijuana sales to begin on a retail and wholesale level by 2024. Wow, that southern state domino. Boom. It's like the the door just got kicked in by Virginia. Let me tell you. So Virginia. Tell me, Mike. I will. So okay. Virginia, it's just exciting, guys, because if you can't tell, Mark and I have a slight southern accent. We're originally from North Carolina. Just slight. So what you're going to see is since Virginia came out of the gate so strong, then now North Carolina does not have any uh, – it, it, cannabis is totally 100% illegal, THC, in North Carolina. So now with, with Virginia laying down the gauntlet, then North Carolina is going to have to get off the sidelines because you cannot enforce this once this goes legal in 2024. Now, a lot of people have asked me about, well, why did they wait so long? Why is it going 2024? Well, a couple of reasons. One is, to me, they're smart because you want to set that marker to say this is our date we're going forward, and we need to give enough time for us to get it off the right, ground. The rules, regulations. Get so, it so the way, yeah. So the way it works is once you pass a law, and this will pass probably in, in a couple of weeks. And so once you pass a law, then you have to go back and write the rules and the regulations. So they have to appoint members to do the Virginia um, Cannabis Commission Authority or whatever it is. Every state has a different one, and then they have to put some uh, submit people who are going to be on that committee, and then that committee has to come up with all the rules. And so the rules are how many licenses it's are they going to have? Cannabis Control Authority, Mike. Whatever. Okay. So remember, what you're see is, I read the news. I know. Go ahead. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. You know it all. So what you're going to see is you're going to see they have to the, the put people on that committee, and then they're going to have to figure out okay, how many licenses are they going to have? What are the requirements to apply for that license? Are they going to have, have any social equity piece to that? A certain amount of uh, minorities will get an X amount of license. But the, the bigger thing here is when giving that time frame in 2024, it gives other states time to get on board because that's where I think Virginia was smart because they want other states around them to get on board. So maybe they're all medical. So maybe Kentucky, Tennessee, and North Carolina will all go medical by that time. But also they are setting this up because by the time they go legal in 2024 we theoretically could have federal legalization right. and so now when you're looking into this business you really not need to start thinking if i'm going to invest in this space i need to figure out when recreational cannabis basically recreational cannabis is here in theory so whatever you buy 15 into states so far right so whatever you 16. buy whatever you buy into you need to understand what is going to be my distribution because once america goes legal all those fake borders come down all the state borders so so now you're getting into an Amazon or a Walmart mentality. So if I'm growing in Roanoke, Virginia, I could sell anywhere in the United States. So it really changes your mindset on how you're going to invest and what you're going to do. So just something to think about as an investor when you go into a certain state and you invest, think about how that's going to affect you once legalization comes through. Well, we're moving from the South to the Midwest. Kansas governor proposes legalizing medical marijuana to fund health care expansion. The governor of Kansas on Monday unveiled a plan to legalize medical marijuana and resulting tax revenue to fund 
Medicaid expansion. This comes as lawmakers are in session already introduced two separate cannabis proposals in recent days. Governor Laura Kelly held a press conference to announce her legislation, arguing that the state is ready for marijuana reform, which she said would provide patients with critical alternative treatment option and would give the state the resources to expand health care with more money uh, left over. The bill establishes the regulatory framework for the cultivation, testing, distribution, prescription, and purchase of medical marijuana. The introduction of this itself is a win for Kansas, who will benefit the medical marijuana, something that, again, our neighbors in Oklahoma and Missouri have already recognized and addressed. So, Mike, they, do you think because uh, Oklahoma legalized and that's you're seeing that pressure put on Kansas now and then Colorado's on the other side? I, I think, honestly, it all comes down to money. I mean, think about it. The, the, if you go back to history, this is this is the back to the future. The reason alcohol prohibition ended is because the federal government had no money. Yeah. So it's so it funny. Was it was depression. And right. so think about it. Now we're kind of in a, a recession, depression, whatever you want to call it from COVID. And so states are like, we need to find money. And right. so this is the interesting part is if you're unfamiliar, Canada, Kansas is one of the most red states. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, if any, like, they're going to be the last state to go. So the go legal. So the fact that they're talking about that is a- absolutely huge. And well, so- the governor is de- as a Democrat. She just got in, and uh, but the Republic. They were saying in the article, Republican legislators, you know, it's probably not going to get done. But you know, that's to have that proposal in a deep red state like that. It's uh, you know, it just shows the power of the tsunami that's coming. Well, it does, but you're right in the fact that the the uh, it probably won't pass in Kansas now, and right, that's okay. Right. And that's- but the way Oklahoma passed is because it was a constitutional amendment. And when we went out there and talked to them after it passed, yeah. we were talking to the attorney general. Um, I'm sitting in the attorney general's office talking about cannabis legalization for his state, and I'm telling him you're going to have some challenges here because there's unlimited licensing. So they have way too many licenses. Crime's going to be an issue. And it was just very surreal. I'm like, how the hell did I get in the attorney general's office talking about marijuana? It was just really, really odd. But the, I guess the point I'm getting at is none of the legislature or anybody in the Oklahoma uh, um, government thought it was going to pass. Not one person. And it passed wow. with like 56 percent. And so they had literally done nothing. Like they're like, well, it passed. I'm like, what are you going to do? So <laughs> they're like. Yeah, I guess we got to figure out a law now, oh, like the rules. So, so it was just real interesting the where they just they, they had just, zero plan and went well, to they pass. didn't want to do it. Oh. And so, and so Kansas is going to be the same way. They're not going to want They're to do it. They're begrudgingly going to do but, it. Well, this is what the this is the power of the people, the people who are listening to this show. And if you're listening to this from overseas in another country, this is why this is going to go legal across the globe. Now in America, you're like the odd man out if you're not going to legalize. And now we need to get into the the fundamentals of the economy. How are you going to create jobs for your people? How are you going to sit there and be able to have that economy move forward in your state and create those jobs? And now this is a jobs grab. And that's what people right. need to understand is that if you the longer you wait, the less jobs you're going to have, because then you're going to have you're going to have gr- massive growth centers in Florida. You're going to have massive growth centers in California. It's going to be like any other type of agriculture for that aspect. And then the whole distribution model is something that nobody's really even thought about when we go into recreational cannabis. Now, I've thought about it. And we have of a plan, course, Michael. but a lot of people have it. support. Come on, exactly. Well. So, so this is. I get excited because when you get people like in Kansas talking about legalization, then you know it's pretty much imminent. Caliente, it's getting hot in here. So, before I end my new segment, because it's all I do here. So, this I wanted to let you know. This well. is a vintage. 18 year old jersey, Mike. And Nobody cares. Still fit in 2003. Nobody 18 cares. year olds. That's the USA rugby. All, all, not all American. I was like in a regional competition for USA South. But I just want to let everybody know 17 year olds. So if, if you're unfamiliar, vintage rugby jersey, still can wear it. They understand the layers. No, don't, they don't. Okay. okay. So the layers, so Mark has a little shtick of the layers of the show is that he wears a different <laughs> rugby jersey every time. Right. So. Mark coaches rugby. He used to play rugby, if you haven't noticed. Okay. And so um, he talks about it a lot. Thank so, you. Pocket that, square. So he wanted to be there and talk about it. It's the layers. Because it's the layers. And so it has nothing to do with the news. Okay. So, well, I just want to leave that shirt. in my segment. That's the news. Mike, back right. to you. All right, great. We're going to take a real quick break, and then we're going to bring on Ryan and Jada and talk about their great show. So hang on tight, and we'll be back. Hey, 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 welcome back to the Counter Support with Michael Patterson. I am the uh, cooler, better-looking brother, Mark, and I'm here to do the introductions of our 
two guests that you see here. Hi, wave. Say hello. Hey. Okay. All right. So, Little Diddy by Jaden Ryan. Two American kids growing up in hot land. John Cougar, Malacap Country of LaPorte, Indiana, where our story begins for these two high school sweethearts who married later in life and have the modern-day Brady Bunch with seven kids from the blended family. One, an Emmy-winning director and triathlete who grew up on a farm and a log cabin and is training for nationals in Olympic weightlifting. The other... A real estate tycoon, an entrepreneur with a focus in alternative medicine who grew up half hippie and likes all music except that gangster rap, no NWA <laughs> on her playlist. They reconnected Grand Judge in Colorado where they have tied the knot and started growing hemp. Very romantic, Ryan. Okay, way to sweep her off her feet there. <laughs> totally. Put her in a field. Go work, honey. And hey, since we're growing hip, might as well film it, right? I mean, one of the team members is an Emmy Award winning director. Soon we'll be able to see all the good, the bad, and the ugly about their hemp adventures in the upcoming TV series, Hemp Valley, Colorado. Let's give a warm cannabis report. Welcome to Ryan and Jada McKeever. All right. Welcome to the show, guys. Welcome to the show. So excited to have you both here. So um, I love the, the Indiana part, and, and uh, now you guys are in Colorado. And so, Ryan, I got to start with you to say, you know, I want to hear kind of how did you get into hemp? I mean, that's the big thing that we always yeah. uh, talk about. And the fact that you actually uh, had the skills to do the videography and actually think about a show and, and kind of move in that aspect. So that's exciting. So de definitely how did t tell us how all I got started. Man, well, let me just say it was a uh, – first of all, it was – it was a nightmare experience. I mean, it, there was nothing really, except the beginning, there was nothing really fun about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. uh, you're, kinda, you're bringing Still reality. reality. Yeah. 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 Right. I mean, De Debbie Downer over here. <laughs> having a good true. time. Hey, you know? I, there's so many people Boys trying. kill Bob. <laughs> well, sorry, I'm trying to save people's ass out you're there. You're right. There's so you're many right. people good out call. there that are trying to get uh, in it now. They think it's you, get rich quick, right? Yeah, all these people coming off the pilot programs and states that are just coming online. Like they think they're gonna, you know, make six, seven hundred thousand dollars off of five, ten acres of hemp. Right. And that is just not the reality. So, how we got in it was uh, I moved from in, Jade and I got married. I moved from Indianapolis to Colorado. That's, that's a whole story we're gonna get into later. Yeah, that's yes. a whole. That's, yes, a, yes. that's an episode. Really. Yeah. That's really right, like right. an episode. So moved to Colorado from Indianapolis, and we're uh -huh. talking like small town Colorado. This isn't. I'm used to Indianapolis with you know three hours I can be in Chicago, mm -hmm. you know Cincinnati, St. Louis, a lot of big cities around. And uh, with my career, I had to travel. Like I, you know, I direct a lot of different type of projects. And um, so you were doing all this. You were doing the the the, the filming and all that stuff before. That's kind of your background. Yeah, I've been doing that for twenty years. Okay. So I've had a production Emmy company. award winning director. Exactly. Mark. So yeah. I was in the intro. I guess what I'm saying <laughs> is, is that there's not many people in this game that are actually know know the videography side right and the fact that you came in because people as you know people come in from hemp from all walks of life you For guys sure. are proven and, and i'm proving that so yeah. the fact that you came in from videography and understand how to do that is is extremely exciting yeah we have i mean we have a very unique perspective mm -hmm. and it's told from like a boots on the ground type of uh, approach you know we are the embedded camera guys in the situation so you know when i'm planting a seed in the field like the camera's right there it's not like we come in for you know three or four days in film we're right. there we we have 87 days of filming wow over 15 months i mean it, it's like 200 hours of usable content for television so it's it's crazy like to be able to have to whittle that down is a momentous task and so yeah so getting into it um moved from indianapolis to colorado basically my client list went for my video production i kind of walked away from my business um brought my you know my ship over west and the clientele just was not there i'm used to directing big big budget casino commercials okay. and stuff like that so all my clients are back in the midwest and i here moved to you know colorado and literally tried to reinvent myself you know on the fly while trying to you know be a father and a business owner and support my family it, i mean it was a very very stressful time in my life and um jada just happened to have 
a 10 acre farm one of as one of her properties you know she's the real estate mogul and, right exactly um you know, I, the, I think i said tycoon tycoon <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <something>. <laughs> right so uh jada had a farm that was a rental property and i uh, grew up on a dairy farm so i just started thinking about you know you know can we do anything with that it's just land that's sitting there nothing there's no crops on it the only thing that's on there right now is or at that time were horses and a hay field that okay. was just used for the horses so for 20 years it was like that and so basically already having a farm knowing a little bit about agriculture from being on the dairy farm and then I mean, honestly, the idea was not necessary to film it at first. The idea was, okay, I need to make money and how right. can I do that? You know, I, I could probably do this hemp thing. So, well, can we, can we back up? And, and so I wanted to see here, uh, Jada's bring in Jada and hear about your background and then take you guys together. And then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the show. That's how fine. About that, Mike? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So Jada, uh, tell us how you, you guys, you know, I want you to tell the story about high school when uh, yes, I want to hear that. Yes. High you guys were, you know, like going to go to the prom together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just yeah. want, I just, I, I need to ask you this question. What was Ryan's like line? Did he say, drop all the zeros and get with the hero? <laughs> Is that what he said, Jada? No. He did not. <laughs> okay. That wasn't, he wasn't that smooth. Okay. No. All right. So tell me how it went. Tell us the story. Well, <laughs> you so. see. So. About prom or him? Oh, no. <laughs> you pick. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, basically, we dated for a minute in high school. Okay. And I left Kicked to go to, to Colorado. Okay. He made zero effort to look for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, none. Yeah, you're like, ah, I think I'm with my old boyfriend. It's now. like a Casanova. <laughs> nice guy, yeah. player. Okay. So, then he waited 20 years. <laughs> and then he found me. And here we are. Like, accidentally. Yeah. Oh, there she is. Seven kids later. Yeah. Right, right. With other people. So, he's playing Somebody. hard to get. That's yeah. what it is. He's playing hard to get. Yeah. Right, right. 20 so, years. I'll I have a couple like, kids. I don't want to lead her on too much. She had to see if you were marriage material. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I was. That's right. That's right. And I did not want to be a hemp farmer. Okay. What, what was that conversation farm. like? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, hey, honey, let's go grow, grow, grow hemp. Like, I couldn't even grow a house plant. Mm. I kill house plants. And like so my wife. He yeah, sh- grow shit. yeah. He showed me that he could grow house plants, and then he's like, hey. I can grow house plants. House plants to hemp. That's yeah. how you sold her on. Yeah. Hey, baby, I grow house plant. Let's go yeah, grow some hemp so outside. <laughs> and I told him, I said, don't expect me to be out there weeding. <laughs> Or watering. <laughs> Let me guess. Are you out there weeding? Yeah, yeah. I totally was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's a trooper. Like harvesting, yeah. harvesting our twenty-five <laughs> pound plants. Oh, by the way, I'm the one training for nationals for Olympic weightlifting, oh, not oh, Ryan. Okay. Just I so see. you know. Oh, good for you. Okay. I, don't know. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I read that wrong. Okay, Ryan. <laughs> Stick to the news. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Oh Touche. My that was very good. Out of the park right there. There you go. That's great. So, so okay, I got to get into the nationals though. So, what are you training oh, for? Just, I just love Olympic weightlifting. So, I just want to go to nationals for my old lady age group. You know. Well, what's your what's your um, sport like? Like how oh, it's work? so Olympic weightlifting is the snatch and the clean and jerk. Okay. Those okay. two. Let lifts. me tell you, she's got a great snatch. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to see it someday. <laughs> I mean, her with her snatch, she will qualify for national. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. That's, that's how, right. That's how he got me, guys. <laughs> exactly. Right there. exactly. Is your mascot a camel? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh. <laughs> I could have oh taken that one step further, but I had to like <laughs> censor myself. Rain it in, rain it in. Well, I, th- I think that's awesome. I, when I started, I started doing bodybuilding at 35, and um, my 40th birthday, I did a show. And yes, Mark's gonna tell you, I came in second out of two people. But <laughs> came in second <laughs> out of two people. <laughs> you know what? And then my kids started talking trash to him too. <laughs> It was so funny. Go ahead, my <laughs> story. This is compelling. But I had won other shows prior to that. Yeah. But uh, I know what it takes. You know, I know what you're going through. And, and to be at that high level, I definitely uh, respect that because it takes a lot of discipline. And I talk about that in that respect. And then, um, so in regards to the hemp, so you guys started growing. So you're out in Colorado. And then how did the show come about? You're like, okay, we're just going to film this entire thing and just see what happens. 
Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yep. uh, Got it. So, and it all happened so fast. Okay. So I was working on, an, on another project that ended October 1st, literally October 2nd, 2019. I started this project or we okay. did, we did. And, um, how it came about was I didn't know anything about growing hemp. So I needed to learn how to grow hemp. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I'm so just wait, gonna... you didn't even learn. You, know well, you, grew that ha- you grew that house plant. I didn't know shit. <laughs> you're, right. like, Come on. you're qualified, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone out there just thinks it's like throwing a seed in the ground right, and yeah. cracking a beer on the porch. You know, <laughs> right, it's exactly. like, uh, yeah, you're my, you like have a mind fuck going through this whole thing. Yeah, like, it right. is not fun. So I had no idea what I was doing. So I was like, well, but, but wait a second. When, yeah. when you, why did you want to do this? Uh, well, <laughs> initially it was Jada. Why did he want to do <laughs> that's this? A good question. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Why did you do that? Yeah. Well, I didn't have a career at the time. Right. Okay. And so you're looking so for some income. I was trying to, trying to make money off the deal. Okay. Uh, knowing at that point I had heard stories that, you know, basically it was between 20 and $30 a pound. Okay. And you could do about uh, 2000 plants an acre and the uh, kind of on the low end of a yield would be about one pound per plant. And so we would have about 10,000 plants, 10,000 pounds, 30 bucks a pound is right. what I was thinking. So, okay, here's a $300,000 field. Right. right. In addition to that, I had done a uh, project for Discovery Health in 2014 where I featured, uh, I, I went out to Colorado and did a story on Charlotte's Web. Okay. Oh, which wow. Is, yeah, you know, yeah. One of the first CBD companies out there. So, uh, so I learned about CBD back, back then. Uh-huh. I just didn't have the means to do anything about it living in Indiana at the time. Right. And I was very interested. I, I mean, I interviewed some of their patients, you know, who were. Uh, receiving extremely positive benefits from or results from uh, taking their product and going from like 200 seizures a month to like a handful, Mm -hmm. maybe not even a handful. So it was, so right there I became a believer in CBD and I I had been, I mean, CBD is different obviously than the THC side of things. And that's the, you know, another big misconception out there is I think we have a generation gap between like maybe like the Gen Xers are kind of the first generation that is, uh, accepting of you know thc in for sure mainstream and we see it's interesting you mentioned that because we typically see a line of about 45 or 46 years old if someone Mm. from from a physician standpoint if you're 45 or 46 and below most Mm. of those doctors are like yeah it's it's fine we don't have a problem with it above that you're right it's a generational thing yeah what we do notice here in the state of florida though is the average medical marijuana patient is about 52 years old Wow. It's one of the oldest, and where it's the largest medical cannabis market in the world. Wow. We are going to hit about five hundred thousand patients, and the second closest is Canada, is about three hundred fifty thousand. Wow! Um, so it's it's interesting because we're leading the world, but yet we're still illegal. Yeah, right. it's yeah. There's so many just shake your head moments, right. you know, with what's going on right now, and even overseas. But so back to our, you know, how we did the whole hemp thing. Yeah. So you know, initially it was about just trying to provide for my family and then okay. also you know in my mind it was like we're doing this for the medicine i know? mean well first of all i mean like then the pandemic hits and you're probably like oh my god this is perfect i don't have to go anywhere <laughs> right i mean wouldn't you well i mean no because <laughs> <laughs> Jen is like nope so uh, Jen, uh, check your head. yeah nope <laughs> Uh, so initially, just how I got the knowledge to do everything, you know, that was a big monumental task in, in and of itself. And that's where the story for the show came from. It was like, OK, uh, I wonder if I can just go like make a documentary about other people growing hemp and then I'll learn how to do it. And then I can grow my field and, you know, not fail. Combine your two. I mean, yeah. your first love and what you know yeah. to develop. And I mean, I think that's yeah. brilliant. Cause I can, I mean, anybody out there wants, I mean the documentary or just having a TV show will open up doors for so many conversations and so many opportunities. And so that's what I did. I pitched that to a number of different farmers in our County and um, basically had one farm just completely open up the door to us just with all transparency wow. and the belief in the medicine yep. as um, the belief in CBD as medicine and they were all in. I mean, they have invested everything they have in this. And so we became friends and we're great friends to this day. I, um, this is a whole side story or the kind of the, the bridge from season one to season two is uh, becoming a hemp broker because there is no money in hemp farming. Uh-huh. It's hard right now. You're yeah. right. And so what you're going to see is this trend to um, large scale production. 
yeah. um, and, and people who can weather the storm. Um, we came out of the gates in, in hemp years, uh, probably five or six years ago, and you're paying for CBD isolate, you're paying seven thousand, eight thousand, ten thousand dollars now. You can get it for five hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we're going to see is we're going to see all these people who got in, and like you're saying, is a market's going to come down. Well, now that the if you saw what the the federal government's thinking about making it a nutritional supplement mm-hmm. for CBD, and if that happens, then you're going to see this uptick again. So it's the market's trying to find itself right now. And so it'll take yeah. some time. But the awareness, I think the videography, the, the, the show that you're doing is going to be something that's going to help other people understand what this is like. And I think yeah. one of the things that I talk about a lot is a lot of people come into this industry, whether it be hemp, cannabis, whatever, and they feel like they can't bring any of their previous knowledge. And you got it. You're like, OK, I can combine all the stuff I already know yeah. and then I can learn about the other part. Because you can't drop all your previous knowledge because my background's healthcare. I bring in that healthcare side into mm-hmm. cannabis and focus more on the medicinal side. But I'm real bullish on, of course, the industrial hemp side because we need to promote that. And I had to learn about that side in the farming. I knew enough not to farm because I can't grow anything. <laughs> so, but, but I get what you did. And so I think that is what I see as something that's going to be, be critical moving forward. Um, so in, during the show, do you, you film the entire, like, um, process of the hemp growing and the harvest and the whole nine yards yep okay <laughs> <laughs> the good the bad and the ugly that's it and, and that's there's just... some ugly you guys so jada i want to you know have your perspective so he comes to you and he says hey you know i want to do this and grow it i'm sure he sold it real good okay <laughs> you know that's right oh come on baby okay be like two, twice in a week okay. here. come on we can do it baby come that's on. right so so you get on this wild ride and then you know you, where did you kind of come in like are you here with him every day are you totally are you doing both your businesses and you're doing you know helping man on the side is he is he literally having you out there pulling weeds and stuff like that yeah or? a little bit of everything okay and i guess the thing that kept me going is when we started filming testimonials of people that use CBD yeah. and I, I mean it makes you cry watching how these people's lives are changed from a plant that you can grow and so that's what kept me going and that's you know when he's out there setting a timer to go change the water every three hours so he's getting up at midnight 3 a.m. 6 wow. a.m. to drive 20 minutes to the farm to change the water And, you know, we just would look at each other and be like, it's for the medicine, it's for the medicine. And so seeing how this plant that just grows changes people's lives is what, you know, kept me going. But were you predisposed to cannabis because your mom was a hippie? Well, so, yeah. So I like how was she a hippie in Indiana? I I thought those were uh, oxymorons. She was like the first time I smelled (laughs) marijuana again, like in college, I was like, oh, my childhood. Oh, really? No (laughs) way. No, no. (laughs) So So what? Like you were a kid and you would like smell it? or Yeah. My dad would be in the basement playing his guitar, smoking (laughs) weed. And I didn't know. It was just normal. Yeah. Yeah. And so. That, that was fine, but I've never been a cannabis user, really. I mean, just a few times, and then I married him, and, <laughs> you know. All down here from there. <laughs> <laughs> kind of got well, reintroduced, right. and, and I just, I love the marriage of CBD and THC together, and right. it's, for me, it's, like, purely medicinal and just, you know, anti-anxiety and all those good things, so, yeah. I don't know where I was going with that. But. Oh, yeah, so okay. Were you out there all the time, like weeding? Oh, and all yeah. That kind of stuff? Not all the time. I would try to come up with as many meetings as I could, <laughs> like for my business when I knew he was going to be there. I'm like, oh. Conflicts. That's a bad time for me. <laughs> Shuffling Sorry. papers around. Like, I can't make it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so during the show, um, Ryan, were you doing, were you like the talent or were you behind the camera? Yeah, so it was, that's what kind of drove me nuts, was uh, literally, I went crazy, Um, was because, you know, my my career is TV, directing, you know, I'm a tech geek, so I know all about the cameras and all about the technology and all that stuff, and so it's hard to, it's hard to do it all, you know, and so, um, and there's a whole nother story, I ended up having to fire my partners, so I literally was on my own, Um, we did a seed run project through the winter, which we ended up doing that successfully but i mean that's a whole story we'll have to get into it's about bringing it we got infested with spider mites and Uh, yeah ended up bringing them home they were in our sheets and all sorts of just awful nightmare stuff i I still deny that i can't (laughs) think that's real it it was yeah it's awful um so yeah the uh 
Yeah, you were asking about doing all the, the work. So, right? yeah, yeah. <clears throat> what was your role? Were you just basically doing everything? Doing everything. Okay. I mean, I had to learn how, like, how to grow the plants, you know, what nutrients to add to them, when, you know, their light schedule, once we go, I mean, the whole thing started in the barn, so I had to learn about converting female plants to males with, right. you know, how you do that, and then getting the male plants to grow and successfully capture their, you know, their genetics and their pollen. At the same time, you're flowering your females, and then you've got to build the greenhouse, you know, out in the oh, wow. front of the parking lot to combine the two with our light deprivation and you know light deprivation meaning a 300 like a 300 foot long piece of plastic that's you know six millimeter oh, plastic wow, yeah, that you yeah. manually put over right. like you, this get, piece you do what you have to do right? you got it yeah mm -hmm. it's crazy so i so in addition to doing all that it's all right what shots do i need you know if i don't have my dp there how do i film this myself um so Having been in business for 20 years, I had established an internship program uh, about 10 oh, years ago. Oh, yeah. Loved interns. Free labor. I love them. Loved love interns. Them. And uh, um, had a, a great run with my interns in Indiana. Got a, a lot of great uh, interns from my alma mater, Ball State University. Ball go, State, go come on. Chirp, chirp. Yeah. And um, so out in Colorado, I duplicated that internship program and then found a way to get it paid for through the Workforce Development Center. There you go. Center, yep. Right? Wow, yep. nice. So I had- We did uh, that in the nursing home business, so yeah. Yeah, and you can get one intern per LLC. So we had a few businesses, so I had a few interns working for us. And so they were doing a variety of different things. and. You know, I feel like some people are destined to meet, you know, and, and the best intern I ever had was, just happened to be the guy I found in Colorado. Oh, wow. As a camera guy. Right? Yeah. And he oh, knew okay. my camera yeah. and wow. he's a great storyteller and coming fresh out of college, you know, having all that knowledge. I mean, that's pretty rare, especially for, you know, small town Colorado. Oh, yeah. So finding him, bringing him on board he became kind of my my go-to like camera guy and so with the with the mental freedom knowing that okay this guy's got my back he can tell my story then i just fully immersed myself into the farm uh growing and and you know a lot of people don't think about it like it's not like corn or soybeans where you just take your product down to the local co-op there is no co-op right. so most of these farmers that do this, they have no idea what to do with it once they harvest, right. uh, if they can even get to that point. And what know? we say is you really got to have a buyer before you plant, you know, exactly. because you, if you're sitting there and then what happens if it rots and then yeah. what well, happens if the price changes? And so you're getting into futures and the industry is just not there yet because the, the challenge is, is, is figuring out who can, you, first of all, who can you trust? Mm. Cause trust, I, I talk about that all the time. It, trust is something that's limiting in this business. It's getting better. But there's still a lot of challenges, and I think um, that's one thing. But, yes, from the farming side, it is very difficult. Here in Florida, um, they're growing about three or 400 farmers, uh, or they're starting, and um, they're all doing test plots, five mm -hmm. to ten acres. What's going to grow where? I mean, Florida, you got the panhandle all the way down to the South Florida, and the soil and, and the conditions, and it's so humid here. And so the question is, can this stuff grow inside or outside? And then did you see anybody out there um, doing the – because what we're seeing is you got the outdoor side and then you got the indoor customizable, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. indoor smokable hemp. Um, did you guys in the show, is it only outdoor? Did you get into any indoor stuff? There's definitely some indoor stuff okay. with, where they're growing those big, beautiful – buds that yeah, look like I mean, cannabis they're gorgeous. like yeah. THC but it's yeah. really only CBD yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and that what we see is that's becoming a thing um, smokable hemp whether it be cigarettes or uh, hemp snuff or, or things like that even overseas we're seeing it where people want to buy it here as you and I talked off air and then ship it over the challenge is is because of the THC content because it's so low so if it's got to be 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 right now it's 0 0.3 in America yeah. well in England it's 0 0.2 some are 0 0.001 and wow. so the challenge is, as a live product, as you and I discussed, well, you don't. A lot of places don't have the sophisticated lab equipment to test that low. So there's a push. If you saw uh, Senator Rand Paul, a Republican uh, in Kentucky, is trying to push to go to 1.0 THC for hemp. Mm -hmm. That's what Switzerland has done, and it's worked very well. Um, when we ship out, we try to ship to Switzerland because these other countries that usually get stuck in customs. And so uh, one of the challenges that we're seeing is, is America doesn't have their, their proverbial shit together when it comes to regulation. Well, other countries don't either. 
And so that's one of the challenges that we see is that we all have to get on the, the regulatory side to where everything's uniform because, like, like you mentioned, soybean, wheat, they've been doing that on the exchanges and commodities for, for decades. Mm-hmm. And so everybody knows how to do it. Well, we have to come up with that system, and I think that's what, what your show will help show uh, will help people realize – why we need steady regulation. I mean, we talk about investment. I mean, it's very difficult. We deal with companies with do merchant processing and for cannabis and hemp businesses because they can't get it other places. So it's it's interesting. I think I'm, I'm excited that, that America and the world is going to get to see your show and they'll realize this is what it really is like. Yeah. So, so speaking of that, let's get back to the guest, Mike. Okay. <laughs> so... The uh, Jade, I want you to talk us through uh, this mold, the seed that when y'all had mold in your in your seeds. Oh, the so we mites. didn't we had mites, mites. Yeah, yes, tell us mites. about that. The challenges you fast as a grow. So, oh. so talk, walk us through that. It and you was, were talking about COVID, so that leads right yeah, into that. Part. Yeah. Okay. So we we um we had our partners, and we actually came to Florida for spring break. Right, yeah, baby. right when COVID started, we <laughs> were in Miami. Yeah. Beach, oh, so, you, you were know. the ones that had on the news. <laughs> yeah. All on your mats. All on camera. Oh my god. Oh, Truly, you two guys. So okay. we would like call our partners, and they wouldn't answer, and they weren't watching our plants so he goes to indiana to see his kids i go back to colorado to a barn full of spider mites we were gone three weeks no yeah really? i mean like the the you know the i don't know nobody was watching the whole mites. thing for three weeks well no yeah they yeah we, we had made arrangements oh my for my partners to take over because we were going to be gone for i was going to be gone for two weeks a week in florida and then a week with my kids but we got trapped in florida because of covid yeah. so we were there two weeks and then i still went and saw my kids so gone yeah. for a total of three weeks no communication with them yeah. whatsoever. Oh my the plants are all, you know, they get, they like kind of curl in on themselves. Mm-hmm. And um, I made the mistake of one, one night when I was spraying, because I had to go spray every night by myself. And I turned a flashlight on and looked at it. And I was like, <laughs> and it, you know, it kind of looks like, you know, it's really pretty diamonds dripping down with like move, moving. It's like the worst oh. thing you can say. Oh, it, it is. is. And it, I, I, you're just yeah. crying. I'm crying, right. spraying the plants, trying to tell him. He gets back from Indiana is just like, oh. Oh my gosh mm-hmm. and it we really probably did have spider mites in our bed <laughs> how can Clothes, we not hair i mean <laughs> yeah uh, how can you not it gets okay. in i mean it gets in everything and these right. things are so small oh yeah you have to use like a magnifying glass to really look at them right unless you have the new york city of spider mites in your grow barn where they are clumped together so much that oh they're my gosh. Like, ripping they're off all, i mean you walk in instead of seeing a lush green forest you're looking at a bunch of white umbrellas mm-hmm. because they, they've created so much webbing oh my goodness. that it just looks like a stalk with white covering over the top right and then i try instead of just cutting them down of course i tried to save them all you know? yeah. yeah yeah right so there comes 250 dollars a week in spider organic spider mite killer right for you know, yeah it's like essential oils and yeah you know not bad stuff but just, still expensive you guys so, use neem oil we, yeah, yep. that was neem is more of like a preventative. Okay. So you spray that kind of under the leaves. Uh, if you just see early signs of spider mites, we had like, mm. it, yeah, we were like breeders of spider mites. We were raising spider mites instead of hemp. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so when did you throw in the towel on the, on the uh, crop? Well, that was what was supposed to go in our field after our seed project. Uh. So we had done our seed project first. 500 plants converted 30 of them to, to male combined those 500 with the 30 males in a greenhouse at that same time develop new mother plants to then Clone. make clones for and plant in our field so basically all of our plants for the field got ruined for for because oh. of spider mites so that's where this community comes in you know it's you've mentioned before uh in even your other podcast just about bringing everyone together and right. this community has to support each other so ca 30 k that's right compassionate army exactly mm-hmm. yeah the compassionate army and and we found some members of that compassionate army so the the largest farmer in the county who was our other main story um the one that i was talking about the farm that i was mentioning came to the rescue um i had because of the situation with the spider mites i canceled our contract with our partners for the field um and just was you know like i'm not doing this I you know this is a disaster i can't do this on my own so just a random day talking with uh, my buddy wacy is his name and um he was like hey uh it looks like we're gonna have about eight thousand eight hundred plants left over uh do you you want me to plant your field <laughs> wow <laughs> and i'm like really what yes. wow I mean, is this real right now right. like 
So out of this, holy cow, you know, disastrous situation. Yeah. Which, by the way, I did everything I could to like salvage those relationships with my two partners, which we have done successfully. And, you know, I still talk to one of them all the time. Are they watching the fields right now? <laughs> no one is watching the fields right now. Um, I, so then I realized that because there's no money in hemp, um, as far as being a farmer, you know, that $600,000 field that I thought was going to be there ended up being $6,700. Wow. Now, you were saying the price, and that blew me away. The price mm -hmm. of hemp when you started to where it is now. Yeah, the price of hemp when we started was between $20 and $30 a pound, and per pound meaning dried biomass right. for CBD extraction. Twenty to thirty dollars a pound when we started. Currently, the price is eighty-five cents a pound. Right? Oh my goodness! And there's five dollars a pound in costs. Oh my okay. goodness! So that you can't grow it. There's right. no way you can unless you are vertically integrated. Unless you own the fields, the genetics, the processing extraction facility, and the product line. And that's, that's that's the challenge in America is is how do we get to that next level? And so with you know some of the things that we're working on to to bring that up is to get grant money, to be able to really, you know, we have to figure out how we can make this on an industrial scale and move it to a corn or move it to mm -hmm. a wheat yeah. and then move into the industrial side. And it's always that chicken or the egg. It's like, well, how do we, we get started? But from that experience, to me, I look at this as like, you got started, that, that was number one. Mm -hmm. And you got, and then you're, you're figuring out, well, where do you go next? And so maybe your expertise wasn't in the hemp, but you had to figure that out mm -hmm. to understand to move into the video yeah. because now you understand the market and now you understand the thought process and now you can put that on film better. Mm -hmm. That's what I see because yeah. that's what, and bringing that together to, to be able to help others is because there's a lot of people out there listening to this and watching this and really want to get into the industry. And I'm so excited you guys are here to be able to, to they can start watching this when it does come out uh, on the on major networks uh, moving forward. And also, I don't want to give it away, but but uh, how did, um, with the major grower, how was the, the harvest? Well. <laughs> don't, don't, if, don't tell, if you yeah, don't, don't give don't it away. Don't give it away. Yeah, don't give it away. Well. The harvest itself was very successful. Okay. Okay. Yeah, be beautiful plants. Yeah. Beautiful plants. Yeah. Big plants, you mm -hmm. know, lots of buds and lots of oil. Well, and let me ask you this. So THC percentage, I mean, sorry, CBD mm -hmm. percentage for those, what were they coming in at? Um, Ballpark. Probably... I'd say 10 to 12 okay maybe for extraction yeah well, that's that's pretty good what we're seeing is people yeah. want like 12 percent of or above if they mm -hmm. can do it that yeah. way for flour mm -hmm. especially smokable flour and we were talking yeah, it's, it's getting pretty big but uh but i was just curious in that respect so that's that's pretty much in line so there's with the big farmer um they are amazing people and you're gonna see that on on camera um there were two situations that happened with them that unfolded over the year that we were filming with filming with them when we first started filming, they had a humongous deal, like a million pound deal with a foreign country. Wow. And you can probably guess which country that is. Yeah. But yeah. don't give it away. I'm not going to give anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm excited to see if he gives it away or not. He has a really hard time. He gives it away easily. <laughs> no. Oh, really? He's pretty easy, huh? <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cheap date, too. Okay. So yeah. what happened was. Um, the million pound deal, uh, they could not, you know, grow all of that themselves, right? So they had to partner with Soaked it out. over a dozen local farmers that they had, they have a family name. They've been a farm family, ranch family for generations. And so, you know, all these other farmers trusted them in their contract that this could happen. You know, this, who, these other farmers would have otherwise been growing corn or soybeans. Yeah, got okay. it. You know, or a different crop. So you know, reputations on the line, successful planting, successful growing, successful harvest, 1 million pounds ready to go, 32 Connex shipping containers full, like sitting there ready to go. The, uh, the customer backs out of the contract oh, that day nice. of shipping. Ooh, oh, nothing like goodness. the last minute. Yeah. So, oh and God. they wrote the contract. Oh my God. So that's of course now in international litigation. Right. So. Which well, is, not well, cheap. I, right. No. Well, I want to go into off air. We were talking about how you guys 
kind of you know got the show you were talking about that experience so to uh, talk about that you know how you ended up getting the show and, and, and partnering and figuring and those fine you got the guys finding you and everything oh you mean the like our executive producers or on the hemp side no no the show itself so right so you're filming the show and then yeah. how you you know like how did they get it picked up i mean how, how did that whole process you were talking about you oh know? right so looking for how to what to do with the show right so right. you had the video so yeah. what did you do then so because i come from a world where i pitch myself i don't have an agent or an agency representing me i would go directly to the clients and you know get my projects myself that was really detrimental to finding an outlet for the show i didn't know anybody in hollywood yeah you know i don't know any agents or anybody. not a lot of people from the port yeah in LA. <laughs> Seriously. you know what i'm saying uh, i mean it's metropolitan and all yeah but, right you but, know, right you know. it's a Booming Metropolis. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they film Hoosiers there in your uh, gym? No, Prancer. Prancer. What is that? Yeah. It's the see? holiday classic. <laughs> oh, okay. Prancer. Prancer. My bad. So okay. I did okay. interview with the director of that. Okay. <laughs> okay. There you My go. bad. Sorry, I went off tangent. So <laughs> go ahead, Prancer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, it was that was another stressful moment in this whole process was it, trying. It was more than a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been <laughs> a real story comes out. Yeah, yeah. it's been years, let's say, because yeah. uh, I was trying to find an agent or a representative to help me with my last project that I worked on just before uh, starting in Hemp, Hemp Valley, Colorado. So for eight months, nine months, 10 months, I was looking for an agent and just like beating my head against the wall. Like, look at me, look at me, look yeah. at what we've done. You know, come yeah. on. How can you not right. want this? Right. And so social media all the social media is trying to tap into people that i knew i did know some people in hollywood because my i had a great group of friends that uh you know we all won those awards together in college oh yeah okay so it's not your emmy it wasn't just me yeah right yeah exactly and uh so you know they were all in hollywood doing their own thing but when you go to hollywood you can't be a director an editor you know you can't do it all you right right, right you got a specific area. job yeah, you right. got, got a lane and you stay right. in that lane mm -hmm. and so they all remember do... mike stay in your lane you hear him <laughs> right uh, talk about about that, you got a news right. segment coming up here so <laughs> 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 right. boom i love exactly. it keep dropping it perfect baby. timing <laughs> i love it <laughs> So, um, awesome. you know, so I was very, very frustrated because here we have spent everything we have on this. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, not to we have spent everything. I've maxed out five credit cards. I have drained my business bank account, my personal bank account, all the loans we could possibly get. You lay it on a line. Yeah. Like, you know, we're over 600 grand into this right now. So it's a lot of freaking money and right. a lot of risk. Right. And um so I was, I can't give up, you know, I've got right. to keep looking. And so I'm just looking in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. And so uh, then I, of course, uh, was like, you know what? The one I haven't tried is LinkedIn. Let's, let's see what LinkedIn's like. So I fired, you up, go. fired up the old LinkedIn account, you know, right. and fired it up, <laughs> I, I pulled the gore, <laughs> knocked, got the running. Right. Right. knocked the dust off that Filled thing. the tank up, you know? <laughs> That's right. threw some money at it. You right. Know? Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, and then, you know, just started meeting business people right. in this space not pot cannabis heads. professionals yeah okay yeah there you cannabis go. professionals just, yes, yes exactly not potheads not right. guys that are carried over from the weed industry or right. you know shady people that just want to take advantage you of Correct. you you know you're meeting the right people yes. and so not only did that lead me to people at all of these different streaming services but it led me to finding our executive producer and it led me to finding our oh. uh, post production house in LA and so that's how it all started to come together for us was LinkedIn and, and awesome. finding Michael and Mark and you know, you guys like, you know, See, do you yeah. heard it here from Ryan? He found us via LinkedIn. Cause I always mm -hmm. talk about LinkedIn is the social media platform for cannabis and hemp period. Yeah. And you're making that you're proving that point to me is that's that's how you were able to do that. LinkedIn mm -hmm. is pretty much free. Unless you do the advance. I'm not, I don't own any stock in LinkedIn. Um, I just want to help people who are looking to get into that because yeah. I have I tell people about 85 to 90 percent of my leads come on LinkedIn. Yeah, absolutely. And like in, and they're all useful tools. Right. Like Instagram is kind of like the hey, look at me like the show right. and tell, you know, it's like, here's my picture. Look what we're doing. You know, it's kind of yeah. cool for the weed porn person, the, the pictures yeah, exactly. and people who don't know weed porn. Weed porn is just pictures of beautiful plants. Yeah, so that's what they call it. So right. Right. so they call it weed porn. But uh, yeah, so so to me, that's where 
you know, for me, I pushed a lot on LinkedIn, but I had, because my background is more professional, I need to do the Instagram. And that's why my social media guy's watching us right now. And here he's like, yep, we're going to get that going. And, and the YouTube stuff and all that yeah. type of stuff and, and push that. But you're right. Every social media platform helps. But I can tell you from a professional side to get going, LinkedIn is huge. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's how it all kind of um, came to fruition, or at least to where we are now. Right. So where's the show? Uh, you know, when when can our viewers and listeners, when can they kind of expect to, to see the TV series? So Hemp Valley, Colorado is being edited right now in Los Angeles. Um, they should be finished with our pilot in a few weeks, maybe okay. three weeks. So then then we have we've already had a soft offer from one of the streaming providers. Nice. And so we are then going to be pitching to four of the major networks of streaming pro providers as soon as that pilot is done. They all are eager to see what we have and, and speaking of that you know what the market is right now you and i were talking off camera about the jim belushi yeah show you know explain to that explain to our viewers and listeners about that yeah where kind of, where is cannabis content now yeah it's huge cannabis yes. content well, is what people want to see okay. um so with that's new, what the market wants yeah the jim belushi show um was like a surprise hit for Discovery Channel. I, I feel like uh, I think for all of us, yeah. we knew it was going to be right. be big for right. sure. But mainstream media just doesn't get it now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're starting to. Yeah. And think about it. The thing I realize re, the reason I love your show is because it you were you were forward thinking, mm. and that's going to be the show that's going to bring on more cannabis content. So Jim Belushi is the the Trojan horse, so to speak. Yeah. And to me, you guys coming in, I get excited because it's hot. We got to put the right message out there. Right. And you guys have the right message. Is like, look, if you want to do this, great. Mm -hmm. But we're going to show you the good, bad, and the ugly. Yeah. So that way, sure. all these people like you, they all rushed in. They're like, yay, we're going to make a gazillion dollars. And and that way, we want people to come in, but we want to make sure they understand what they're getting into. Exactly. Which is perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an exciting journey. I mean, if you're doing it for the right reasons, then it will work out. Because I feel like this period in time right now is kind of like that weed out period, you know? <laughs> no <laughs> pun intended, right. <laughs> Planned that yeah. one. And, um, you know, w whether these people can weather the storm or not is uh, going to really show wh where their heart was. Well, you, know? you didn't answer my question, okay? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're being really cryptic on the release of this show that we're trying to promote here. Sorry, sorry. Okay? Yeah, so, so well, first of all. Come the, on, bro. The show, I'm giving the you show. A, a single here, Thank okay? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm setting you up, bro. Come on. Larry King so, softball. <laughs> yeah, so, <I> said, <laughs> <laughs> so we don't know where it's going to be yet. Okay. Correct, but I'm saying time frame, it like will 2021. Probably, Oh, for sure. Okay. I okay, mean, it's good. probably going to be summertime, like maybe April, May, late okay. April, early May. Okay. Oh, great. wow. Okay. I mean, it's going to be coming quick. Okay. So that leaves us to because someone else is doing all the post production now, which we would normally be doing. That leaves right. us free to film season two, and so right, we are now starting. We've already started actually filming season two. That's great. And uh, there are some big plans for what we're going to do with season two. Um, if you think of season one as boots on the ground, hemp farmers, where does CBD come from? Um, you know, who are these people? Because it's not, there's a thousand documentaries on CBD, right? You know, the molecule and breaking it down and showing the graph and there's a lot what, of boring ones. Yes. So boring. <laughs> That's where you're getting that. Right. Yeah. There's Super a thousand boring. of them. Right. But there's nothing really about the characters. Who are these people right. Right. The that are the, in this industry? Yeah. And absolutely. so that's where we want to focus in on is, and that's what we did in season one is who are these people? Right. You know, who is the hemp girl? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and no, who are I do they? think that's what we want to do. We want to normalize CBD and then I think season two is going to go into normalizing THC. And there's, I think there's pushback on regulations and yep. from certain people, but from the right people, we want regulation. We want it so that it can go to everyone. Right. So. I think well, it's great. I think the thing we need to take away from this is that Ryan comes in quick and he's super easy. That's the two <laughs> things that you just Ooh, yeah. uh, said that. So fascinating interview there, Ryan. Absolutely. Wrap it so, up, Mike. So there you go. You're host. awesome. So we're all excited. So, so Ryan and Jada McKeever with Hemp Valley, Colorado. And so the show's coming out soon. And you can definitely listen to uh, we'll, we'll be talking about it here on LinkedIn. We'll also be, uh, you'll see me post about it when it does come out. So, um, Ryan, how can people, uh, Jada, how can people follow you? You do that part. Come on, girl. Social. Dial it Social. in. Okay, okay. So, we are on Instagram under 
oddly enough, Hemp Valley Documentary, not Colorado. So Hemp Valley Documentary. Okay. YouTube is... Hemp Valley, Colorado. Think, Hemp Valley, yeah. Colorado. Okay. Um, Facebook, Hemp Valley Documentary. So you can go follow us there. We have some good little snippets on there that'll make you laugh. And I've seen you can the, meet the, the characters. It looks and, good. I like yeah. it. And then how do they follow you on LinkedIn? Well, LinkedIn, it's just my personal um, my name, Ryan McKeever. And that's How do you spell your last name? Ryan J. McKeever, M C capital K E E V as in Victor E R. Well, the let me tell you the reason important. the yeah. reason I do that, when I type it into LinkedIn, if you don't type it in exact exactly, then yeah. somebody else will come up and so and that's why I always tell people when they do me and the, the whole thing. So good. So Ryan McKeever and Jada. McKeever, thank you so much for being here. You know what? We really appreciate you guys coming in. You guys, you you popped our cherry. Okay, I want to let you know you're the first in-house guest that we've had. And so right. we really now we appreciate had, we had a fan. We, we had our we one did fan. have one fan. We have one fan. He, he came by. For he came by. Not episode. that fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 a real not, live person. Oh, okay. Right. okay. Not the right. little fan. And I'm, I'm glad not you, a stalker either. No, not right. a stalker. Okay. No. So I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, we have something special that Jesse and I, you know, want to present to him. Uh, it's Who is a, him? A, a, to you. The, okay. The Canada Support with Mike Robinson. Okay. That's you okay. over there. That's me, right. Okay. Okay. Pocket Square. So this is something that we want to do a gift to you. So, Jesse, whenever you're ready. The most followed, most followed cannabis, cannabis professional, professional on LinkedIn, LinkedIn in the world. Yeah, Mike, you did it! Yes. Congratulations, yes. Mike, on this unofficial accomplishment. Yes, Way it's unofficial. Go. Yes, it's unofficial. The, most followed. the most followed cannabis professional on LinkedIn in the, on the planet. Yes. So, uh, over 33,000 followers. And so, if I'm wrong, if you can find somebody else that has more, let me know, and I'll keep seeking them out to be the best. But um, one of the things I'm working on is to promote the Compassion Army. We're all in this together. CA30K. Yeah, if you don't know the Compassion Army, if you're watching this show or listening to it right now, you're part of it. If you're on LinkedIn and uh, follow my page, you're part of it. We need to build uh, an army of people who want to see this move forward in the proper direction. And so uh, I'm very thankful for this unofficial honor. Yeah, and I'm definitely looking to, uh, to to definitely keep it going because we want to keep pushing this and keep pushing this out to the masses. There's so many people who are behind enemy lines right now with medical cannabis in, in the U.S. and around the world, and we need to keep fighting to make sure they can push this forward and bring this medicine to as many people as possible. So I take the unofficial honor, and I and I relish it. You're that. very welcome, Mike. You've earned it. And, uh, you know, my, I've been by his side for years and years, and uh, for him to have this accomplishment, uh, it's fantastic. So – you have uh, years of knowledge, and let's see that knowledge or hear it in the next segment, the tip of the day. The Cannabis Entrepreneur Tip of the Day. So since I uh, only really do the news around <laughs> here, I'm going to employ Jada. She's going to dial in the spot for the tip of the day. Go take it ahead. Take Ooh. it away, Jada. Ooh, the tip of the day today is self-disrupt. They are a modern-day white glove professional branding service. If you need to be seen, they will get you noticed. If you have value to give, they make it more shareable in today's digital landscape, and you need that in this day. The bottom line is Self Disrupt strategically crafts your legacy through personal branding content. For more information, you just need to go to theselfdisrupt.com. Theselfdisrupt.com. Boom. Perfect. One take, Jada. That's take. what I'm talking about. One take. That's All right. a little bit of get you some. The nice <laughs> entrepreneur tip of the day is always keep learning. I think Jada and Ryan can speak to this. So. One of the things when you're looking to get in something, you really need to spend as much time as you can learning about the industry. A lot of times I talk to people about connecting dots. You can't connect dots if you don't know where they are. So I typically read 15 to 20 articles a day. I'll ship them over to Zach, my social media guy with Self Disrupt. Um, send him over and he'll definitely throw those out and he sends me some as well. Mark actually sends a couple here and there. Um, but the main thing is knowledge because everything is changing so quickly. I think you guys see that on a mm-hmm. daily basis. Um, also, from the learning side, you really need to do that to increase your confidence. If you're going to sit there and go to a conference and you want to meet all these people and you don't know anything about the industry, you're not going to make a good impression. When people come up to me and read me rules and laws about certain states and I say, okay, they've done their homework. They've actually researched this and they want it to, to, to move forward. Another tip is say you want to get a job in this in this industry and you, people, uh, what I hear from p- people in the industry who are, are human resources, people all, everybody want to work in the cannabis and hemp industry, but nobody does their homework. 
So a thousand people will apply for one job and only maybe five people will actually read the law in that state that's going to deal with their position and how it's going to work. So you really have to do your homework and your due diligence. Also, when you do that, your self-confidence will increase. When I started in this eight years ago, and nobody really knew much about it. And I realized, you know what, if I can read more than everybody else and I can study and I can do as much as I can, then I can become that, that information source that's a trusted source and then people will want to listen to more of what I'm saying because what I found is a lot of people are super lazy. They don't want to go past what they're used to doing. They don't want to get out of their comfort zone. And so also learning prepares you for the unknown. So uh, one of the things, perfect example is um, I watch a lot of documentaries. And so I'm definitely excited about Ryan's documentary. I was watching one on the uh, History Channel about the food that built America in Milton Hershey. Uh, a lot of people at Hershey bars and so forth and so on. But what you may not realize is at one time, Hershey was selling all the milk chocolate to all his, his uh, competitors at the same time. So he was the only person on the planet who was actually making chocolate. And so um, I've actually used that, that idea to something that we're working on currently in our global business, which is MGMC Pharma Group, to be able to supply cannabis to people all over the world and let them make whatever they want to make. So you learn a lot about not just cannabis, but continue learning in general. So the, the tip of the day is always keep learning. Mm -hmm. And that, if I could, real quick. Go ahead. Please. So that, that, Absolutely. that's a great, I love your perspective on that because, um, you know, always keep learning. Like, so I've kind of shut down the hemp farmer thing. I mean, our partner, Wasey, is going to, he's going to plant the field again for us, but I'm not going to really do anything with that. I'm moving into more of the hemp brokering thing. There you go. So I'm trying to save all these people's asses who are now have all this product including raw materials so because you're paying it forward i mean you yeah. really are this guy bailed you out right and now totally. you see what's going to happen this bottleneck and mm -hmm. so that's what you're doing to not only help yourself but help everybody else so i mean this guy's sitting on 250,000 pounds of biomass oh my and I'm goodness i'm trying to move it for him you know? wow as Holy well God. as isolate crude oil you know and then learning you learn you figure out what is going to be my next step Exactly. So it, like I tell people in this business, it's a proverbial scavenger hunt. <laughs> you're always looking for stuff. You don't know what it is, but once you find it, then you're like, oh yeah, this is what I was looking for. And then that leads you to the next step, whatever it may be. So absolutely. That's great. Well, and the next step is the cannabis champion of the exactly. week. My great segue. Thank we'll, you. We'll head there. The cannabis champion of the week okay now ryan uh you know you got to pay the bills bro so <laughs> let's hit this spot all right, That's right. a little wife did it one take so I you know. know no no pressure one more thing i'm taking from you here you can only do the news <laughs> your cannabis champion of the week is sponsored by world cbd awards if you want to be a part of the world's only objective product awards competition the World CBD Awards Conference and Gala is for you. For more information, go to worldcbdawards.com. That was a great monotone spot. That was great. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Seriously, though. Okay. Seriously, go. Seriously. You Seriously. Your, wife did a lot. your wife did a lot she better. Did it better. Okay. <laughs> so did. I'm yes. just saying. She's bright. She's, All right. She's the sun. So the, cha <laughs> the champion of the week uh, is an attorney, and his name is Chris Nanny. And Mark may know that name because I do. Yes. Chris Nanny is the nephew of Paul Nanny, who was our goalkeeper in high school we soccer. soccer together. Yeah. So, a yep. little story about Chris Nanny. Chris reached out to me years ago, still being a student at uh, a law student at Ohio State. And he reached out to me through LinkedIn, and he got my name through his uncle, Paul Nanny. And he called me, and he told me that um, his law professors were – he wanted to go into cannabis law, and his law professors said that was stupid and you're going to ruin your career. And he, and he goes, what do you think I should do? And I said, you know what you need to do? You need to tell your law professors to go F themselves because they don't know what they're talking about. And as if this is your passion and this is what you need to do, think about it. They're working on tenure. They're not going to risk their career by giving you information or giving you guidance on how to get into cannabis. So long story short, he listened to me. He's like, man, this is great. This is great information. And so long story short, now he's been in business now for many, many years. And he's a graduate of Ohio State Law School. Chris is focused on researching the law surrounding cannabis social equity programs. And he has developed a SEAT, S-E-A-T, which is Social Equity Assessment Tool, an equation to grade the efficacy of existing programs. Chris has used this formula with a case study with the L.A. Los Angeles Social Equity Program. Chris has written a book on, with others, uh, authors, sub, uh, which is titled 
Understanding Social Equity, which seeks to offer multiple perspectives on various components of social equity. And we at the Cannabis Report would like to thank Chris for all of his hard work in pushing the cannabis industry forward into a more equitable industry. And if you have anybody who would uh, like to be knowledge or bring awareness as a cannabis champion, please uh, direct message me on LinkedIn. And if you'd like to contact Chris, he can be reached on LinkedIn at Chris Nanny, which is a N A N I, and it says Chris Nanny, attorney and professor. That's how you find Chris on LinkedIn. So we want to thank Chris, Chris for all the work that he's doing. Well, yeah. I had a fantastic time today, guys. Thank you for right, coming too. in. This yeah, was the best. It was, you know, even with Mike here. Right. Okay. <laughs> I can't exactly. wait to come back. Thanks again That's for. Uh, we we want to have you as, as anytime you right. want to come back. Please feel free to. And Thanks. so I want to since we're getting them to do all the work, I want Jada to do our sign off, my official sign yes. off. Yes. Today, so I want Jada close us out, you, Jada. Close us out. And that's the way it is in the world of cannabis today. The power of change is within all of us. The world changes when we change. We had a great time, I would say. <laughs> right? There it is. One day. Uh -uh. She's not done. Oh, my bad. <laughs> okay. We did have a great time. Yes. And I hope you did too, everybody. And I hope your mind was broadened with cannabis knowledge. And remember... We are all, all we need. All we need, baby. All right. Until next need. time. All right, take See it ya. easy. Peace. Thanks Peace so out. much.